This screencast covers the material from Module 2, Lesson 15, and is based upon the problem set. The, the problems in the problem set do parallel several problems in the homework. I will create another screencast for the homework to give you some hints, but you might want to refer back to this to have the whole procedure outlined for you from the initial reading to the solution. Problem 2 from Module 2, Lesson 15. There's a word problem. Let's read it. A container of oregano is 17 pounds heavier than a container of peppercorns. Their total weight is 253 pounds. The peppercorns will be sold in one ounce bags. How many bags of peppercorns can be made? All right, what can we draw? Well, we don't know uh, how much oregano, nor do we know how much how much there is, how many pounds of peppercorns there are. But we can draw a picture. I can draw a picture of peppercorns. We don't know what that is. And I can draw a picture of oregano. Now, the representation of oregano is going to be larger by 17 pounds, so we'll uh, put the 17 in that little blank there. We do know that the total of both of these is 253 pounds. How are we going to find the weight of the peppercorns? Well, the first thing we need to do is eliminate the weight of the, the 17 pounds that the oregano, the 17 more pounds for the oregano. So we'll start with 253 and we'll subtract 17. And we get 236. So now we know that two units, that would be these amounts right here, both of these together, weigh 236 pounds. Therefore one unit equals 236 divided by 2. We can divide 236 by 2. One We get a 1 in the tens place, 2 left over, and that is an 8. So we know that each one of these blank units over here are 118. So we have 118 for the uh, number of pounds in the peppercorns, but now we have to turn them into ounces because they, they are telling us that they're sold in one ounce bags and how many bags of peppercorns can be made. Alright, so let's set this up in the way that we have been doing for the past couple days. I have 118 pounds equals blank ounces and that is the same as 118 pounds equals 118 times 1 pound. We'll put that in parentheses. Now we'll convert those pounds to ounces. We have 118 times how many ounces in a pound? That would be 16. So now we're going to have to multiply 118 times 16. Six times eight is forty-eight. Regroup. Six times one is six plus four is ten. Regroup. And six times one is six plus one is seven. Put in our zero because now we're multiplying from the tens place. That's simple. We're multiplying one. So all we have to do is copy that number down. <coughs> Find the sum of our partial products. And our answer is 
1,888 ounces. Now we're going to put that into a statement. 1,888 bags of peppercorns. can be made this is problem one from module two lesson fifteen and we're going to go over this problem and give you a hand and guide you through uh, solving it alright so we have the question here or the uh, problem Liza's cat had six kittens. When Liza and her brother weighed all the kittens together, they weighed four pounds, two ounces. Since all the kittens are about the same size, how many ounces does each kitten weigh? Well, we got to look at the first sentence here. She had six kittens. We also can refer to this, they're all about the same size. So we can re represent them using a tape diagram. We're going to take a tape diagram and partition it into six equal parts. What else do we know? We know that when we get all the kittens together, weigh all of them together, they weighed four pounds, two ounces. So, we know that all together we have four pounds two ounces. Now let's look at the question. What are they asking? About how many ounces does each kitten weigh? Okay, the answer has to be in ounces. And you'll notice that our amounts here are in pounds and ounces. So what do we have to do? We have to convert these pounds to ounces. Let's go through the procedure for that. We already have two ounces. We'll add that on at the end. So, four pounds equals blank ounces. So we have four pounds equals four times, we'll put this in parentheses, one pound. And now we'll continue with the next line four times. What is one pound equal to? One pound is equal to 16 ounces. So we'll continue with that. Now we're going to mul multiply four times 16. Four times 16 is 64 ounces. Now we're not done because we have 64 plus the two ounces, so we have a total of 66. Are we done? No, we're not. Because now that we know that that's equal to 66 ounces, we need to partition or divide that into six equal parts. That means we need to divide. So, we'll divide 66 divided by 11 equals, or we could set up a problem using the tableau, 66 divided by 11. 11 goes into 66 six times. So the answer is 6 ounces. We need to put that into a sentence. <coughs> Each kitten weighs about six ounces. Here's problem three for module two, lesson 15. Let's read it. It says each costume needs 46 centimeters of red ribbon and three times as much yellow ribbon. What is the total length of ribbon needed for 64 costumes? Express your answer in meters. Well, one thing that I noticed right off the bat is the units we're given are meter, or centimeters, 
and we need to convert that to meters. So let's not forget that we have a unit conversion here, as with all the other uh, problems in this lesson. <clears throat> well, let's start with the first statement here. Each costume, each costume needs 46 centimeters of red ribbon and three times as much yellow ribbon. Well, we know how much red ribbon, so let's go take care of that. And I'm going to show you a couple ways to do this. Uh, there's uh, more than one way to draw this tape diagram. So I'm going to write red. And we're going to make uh, that 46 centimeters. And since I know that I have three times as much yellow, I can put yellow. And I'm going to draw three boxes that are the same size. And I'm going to take this, and that will tell us how many uh, centimeters of ribbon we need for one costume. Now another way to do this is just one tape diagram, and I'm going to draw that for you. So we're going to do this, 46, we know that's centimeters. I can put a bracket here, I can put red, and I can draw some more. Should have left a little more room up top. We'll see if we can slide things around a little bit. And this would be yellow. Yeah, I can move that down. Now, we can represent it like this and put the question mark on top. Either way is good. Either way is a good, uh, accurate representation of it. Uh, I imagine some of you have preferences for one and some have a preference for the other. And that is fine. There's more than one way to do this. If we look at the second representation, it's very clear that we need to multiply, right, 4 times 46, but of course this over here on the left hand side means the same thing. So we're going to calculate 4 times 46 because there's a total of 1, 2, 3, 4 of these. Simple multiplication problem. 46 times 4. Regroup the two. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 2 is 18. So one costume, or one unit, equals 184 centimeters. Now we can convert that to meters now, or we can do it at the end. I'm going to do it at the end, but at some point we need to do that. So if one unit equals 184, I have to have 64 units. And that equals 64 times 184 centimeters. Let's do the math. 184 centimeters times 64. We're going to multiply from the ones place. We get a 16, regroup the one. Uh, 4 times 8 is 32, plus 1 is 33, regroup the 3. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7. Multiplying from the tens place, we insert our 0, because we have 10, or 6 tens times 4 ones, which would be 24 tens. Regroup the 2. 4, or 6 times 8 is 48, plus 2 is 50. Regroup the 5. And 6 times 1 is 6, plus 5 is 11. We'll find the sum. Now we know that unit is centimeters still, so we need to convert it to meters. So let's use our standard process here. I have 11,776 centimeters equals blank meters. So we're going to copy that again. Equals 11,776 times 1 centimeter. And that equals 11,776 times, well, meters. 1 centimeter is the same as 1 hundredth of a meter. We'll finish that problem up. So I have one hundredth times 
times 11,776. And that equals 11,776 hundredths. And that, converting it from unit form to standard form, becomes 117 and 76 hundredths of a meter. Finishing up with our statement, the total length, length, now we'll get that erased here. It won't erase, so we'll just cross it out. Length of ribbon needed is 117 and 76 hundredths meters. All right. This last problem will probably have you shaking your head, and you'll be wondering how to figure it out. This is where uh, using the tape diagram becomes extremely useful and a powerful tool. We're going to do something a little bit different this time, but I think maybe it will convince some of you that the tape diagrams are a good idea after all. Let's read the problem. When making a batch of orange juice for her basketball team, Jackie used five times as much water as concentrate. There were 32 more cups of water than concentrate. How much juice did she make in all? Well, let's start with what we know. We know that we have concentrate. So I'm going to make a, a C here. And I don't know how much concentrate at all, do I? So we're going to leave that blank. And now we are going to talk about water. We know that there's five times as much. So we're going to draw five equal boxes representing the water. So we know that in all there are six units here, but we have no idea what these units are. Let's look at the next sentence and see if we can tack some numbers onto this so we can attack it, because right now all I see are blanks. There were 32 more cups of water than concentrate. Well, if we look at our tape diagram, these four here represent the uh, amount of water, how much more water there is in concentrate. So I know that this amount right here has to equal 32 cups. So we can now discern from that that 4 units equals 32 cups. So one unit is going to equal 32 divided by 4. And one unit equals 8. 8 cups. So how much did she make in all? Well, we know that we have how many units? We know that each unit is 8, right? Because 32 divided by 4 is 8. So in each one of these we have an 8. Uh, we know that there are a total of six eights. So now I'm going to continue and say six units equals six times eight. Six units equals 48 cups. So she made 48 cups of juice in all. Okay, well you can see once again this is actually fairly powerful. We have to do a little thinking in order to get through a problem like this. So we have part A answered, now let's look at part B. We're going to uh, pour the juice into quart containers. How many containers should she fill? Well let's, uh, we'll say 48 cups equals blank quarts. 
Okay, 48 cups equals 48 times 1 cup. And what fraction of a quart is a cup? How many cups are in a quart? Well, there's two cups in a pint and two pints in a quart, so we know that there's four cups in a quart. So let's continue. 48 times. Now, if we're talking about quarts, one cup is one-fourth of a cup. So times one-fourth quarts. And we now have 48 divided by 4. And we can look at that as a division problem. 48 divided by 4 is 12. So there's 12 cups. She could fill 8, or excuse me, that would be not cups, that would be quarts, excuse me. Quarts. She could fill 12 quart containers. All right, uh, again, uh, problem 4A, I think, uh, will make a convert out of you as to the utility and helpfulness of the tape diagrams. Um, it gets more complicated as years goes on, so we need to master the techniques and learn how to draw out a problem using tape diagrams. It's incredibly useful.